this is Kayla Bellamy again, and we're here to check back in on the second scrape for the, the rainbow wreath that we started in the last video. It's been about uh, three days, and it's been pretty rainy off and on here, uh, so I've just kind of let this reed sit in a box while I get through the concerts on some other reeds, but I was curious to see what's going on with this guy. I don't want to do too much today because it is just completely pouring outside. Um, so everything's of course going to change in the next couple of days. But if you remember the last time when we left this reed, it was really flat. It was really saggy. The C sharp and E natural wouldn't hold at all. Um, so the first thing that I do, I've got some other ones in here. I'll repeat this process for in a moment, um, is soak the reed up as if I'm going to play it and take a look at how the cane is responding to what, when the water gets in the in the fibers and it looks like the tip is still pretty balanced there's a little bit of a tendency to, to uh, collapse over here on this on this wire down uh, bottom left or bottom right blade excuse me um, but it looks like it doesn't it's not opening too much it's not completely closed I'm gonna go ahead and use my pliers to get the tip opening to something that I might want to play on and see how it grows <laughs> that sounds a lot more promising than we left it so let's see how it plays. I'm expecting this to have hardened up a little bit and to maybe be a little bit stuffy, but let's see what's going on. So already a lot better. I can get the E natural and C sharp to to stick, but minus the, the accent. So uh, it looks like it's going exactly the direction I thought it would. You can hear there's definitely some stuffiness going on. So the main thing that I wanna do today is make sure that all reaming that will be done for this read is completed by the end of this, state, the end of this step, excuse me. So I can make sure that I don't have to do anything with that later, which will impact some of the other scraping that I'd have to do. I also want to double check my back to front taper and make sure that it's straight, that it's a straight line, that it's basically a linear, uh, linear progression from the collar or the shoulder all the way to the tip. I can already see on this, this wire down top blade that there's a little bit of a bump from where I put the tip in last time. And so I'm going to smooth out the, the tip as well as do just a tiny bit of reaming after and after that initial soak, it doesn't quite go all the way to the mark on my mandrel anymore. This hopefully will also clear out some of the some of that uh, fuzz in the sound. This reamer I'm using is a homemade reamer. It's a drill bit and in, put into a, a wooden knife handle. The size of the drill bit, if you're curious, I believe is three sixteenths. I will make note of that and post that in the video comments. That's what seem, that's what comes to mind, but I could be very off. All I'm doing with the end of this rat tail file here is taking out the extra bits of cane from where I had reamed there. The cane, again, is just a little bit soggy, as is to be expected. I'm clearing out all of that so I don't have any door jams stuck in between the blades. I'm gonna reopen the tip. Uh, see if that cleared it cleared anything up. A little bit more stable. So to get the rest of that that clarity in the sound, I'm actually gonna leave that leave that be for just the moment just to make sure that I don't fall into the trap of worrying about the tone first because this next step will involve taking some out of the heart area which will open up the sound a lot. It'll also kind of take care of some of that response issue. So I'm going to do what I would mentioned before which is that back to front taper. Make sure that I remove the little bump that's in this top blade. And then I'll go ahead and do it with a knife. If you're not comfortable with this kind of precision precision scrape right around the heart, then you can do this with a, with a file or with some sandpaper. Just very little downward pressure blending across the heart. The other side here is to balance the amount of cane I've taken off. It's, it was really a more aggressive scrape on this side that had the bump. I'm going to take a look at that. The bump is now gone, but the tip 
the first measurement of the tip is a little bit thicker than I would like to play on. So in this second scrape, I'll go ahead and get that first millimeter above the thumbnail down to where I really want it to be. Degree scrape. Focusing right in on that bow tie. Play on right now. Again, still using this contrabassoon plaque so I can really see what I'm doing. Rotate across, repeating the process on this side. Scrape to just blend up through the channels, make sure that I didn't have any bumps that I put in there when I went and did this extra tip scrape. And here's a really light piece of sandpaper. This is 660, just to buff out that front third. Make sure that everything's a nice smooth transition. Move some of the extra swollen cane fibers just from the, the moisture in the air and help get a little bit more clarity to the initial articulation and brighten up the sound just a hair. It already feels a lot, a lot smoother and more dense. And you can hear in the crow then that there's a lot more of that low rattle. Ooh, I'm gonna round out both wires. That did a lot more than I thought it would responded really well. I've got a little bit of slack in the second wire. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Second wire, wiggle and pull, pull out that slack. Throw it back up. the E again. That's all right. I still have one more pass to do on the channels and rails, which should bring it up some. Still leave it just a hair flat. What's going on outside? I'm not going to be too concerned with a little extra flatness. When the rain stops, it'll bring everything back up. Rails, and I'll go over and repeat this with the file, just to clear up. I may have overscraped, and not overscraped, but uh, stumbled on in my scraping. Created any extra little bumps. And then I'm also going to take this sheet of 660 wet dry sandpaper and sand the inside of the blades again just to get rid of any of that extra fuzz that's on the inside of the sound, inside the reed. The blades. That gets rid of the, I don't know if you can see that from here, all of the extra wet cane that's inside of the reed there. To, to harden up a reed, make sure that it's not overly squishy. It definitely brought the crow back up. This is almost all I want to scrape on this right now before I play through some scales and whatnot on it just to get it started breaking in.
And that, believe it or not, is about where I'm going to pause with this read and play on it a little bit just to see how everything breaks in. Uh, just as a quick recap of what's going on with this guy, this is the same read that we scraped about three or four days ago. Um, all that I did today was ream out the back, which now has a little piece of cane in it, my goodness. because over the, the course of the past few days, a combination of weather and the cane settling um, caused it to, to swell and reduce the volume that could pass through the throat. So I reamed that out with my cylindrical homemade reamer so that it will fit on my vocal and, with, and increase the amount of air that I can put right through the, the throat of the reed. Uh, tightened the second wire. So there had been, in that kind of collapsing, hardening process as the cane crunched down, reducing the size of the throat, that second wire became loose. I just retightened it up with the, se with the second wire. Um, I went through and repeated the tip process at the very front in front of the thumbnail on the first millimeter through that bow tie region just to get some clarity to the, to the articulation and took down the rails and things to, uh, to really raise the pitch a little bit and make it a little bit more stable, kind of up in that tenor register. And now I'm at a point that I have a crowing reed and the next step with this is going to be to play it. I'll probably play it for about an hour's worth of performance time just in the practice room just to see what's going on with the read and make a couple tweaks along the way. But there's really only one more scraping session that I would consider that's not in the mo moment adjusting with this read. And that's going to be after this stabilizes in terms of response and pitch. I may have some work to do with how the channels transfer from the back into the tip with the the width of the spine is pretty consistent now from blade to blade but that proportion may need to change depending on how the cane hardens up so I've got response intonation that'll affect the flexibility of the reed and this and the stability particularly in the tenor and upper registers and the the tone itself is really my my final concern for the most part if I have those first three factors in place then the reed sounds okay but right now I'm pretty happy with this this sound is right squarely in the middle of what I would consider the box of bassoon sound so I'm not too concerned about this not sounding like a pretty reed once all is said and done so thank you for tuning in on this early morning reed scraping session and I'm gonna go crank out some scales on this reed and see what it sounds like <laughs>